Well, it's the big time now. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. And if you're not sure if something happened to you is worth moving forward when it comes to taking legal action, we know somebody who does, right? Well, yes, because you can get those questions answered today. Tom Merriman from Merriman Legal is joining us for another round of case or not a case. I feel like I'm at law school when I sit here and like really <laughs> decipher these. Although, not serving any these, are, more interesting these are easy. These are well, probably easy compared to what you've had to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think I have to say you cannot sue an NFL referee for negligent infliction uh, of emotional distress, unfortunately. <laughs> Otherwise, my office would be filled every Monday. You'd be doing great. But, uh, yeah, you, you know it. But. We, so we get we get this game again. What do we call this game? Case or not a case? I love this because a lot of people think that necessarily they, they might not have a case, but in fact, they do. So you're giving yeah. us some great scenarios. Just because you're angry about something doesn't mean necessarily you have That's a case. Absolutely. And sometimes right. you think, yeah, yeah, vice versa. Right. Let's do one. So let's start try, with one. Try the first one. Okay. Okay. A priest, a rabbi, and an agnostic cowboy walk into a bar. No man. dirty jokes here. <laughs> no dirty jokes. The Happy Trails Bar and Grill. Uh, they discuss theology, as we, and with most discussions <laughs> of religion late at night, there is some alcohol being served. The cowboy drinks five beers in five shots. None of the men appear drunk. Uh, at the end of the evening, the cowboy tips the waitress, thanks his friends. He's unpersuaded by their arguments, but he gets in his pickup truck and drives home, runs a red light, and causes a horrible crash. The police determine he has a blood alcohol content of 0.19%. Is that a lot? That's, That's a, lot. a lot. That's more than twice the legal limit. That's how I wake up. Okay, case or not a case. Do the crash victims have a case against the bar? I initially would look at that and say no. If he appeared to be sober, I would just, you know, if he were just continuing to serve him drinks and gets up and leaves. But I bet you there's a case there. I think there's a case against the bar because yeah. they know how many drinks they served them in a certain amount of time. Okay, Natalie, you should have gone with your initial instinct. Oh, man! Yep, you were right. Uh, There's not a case. Yeah, in, under Ohio law, a bar is not responsible for a drunk driver unless they serve that person while they were noticeably intoxicated. That's the key so thing. How can you, yeah, that's, you that be really your words. becomes great. Yeah, and I've had cases where somebody has been served so So this is opinion. Right, well, not you, you need witnesses, and this is the key. If you're injured by a drunk driver or you have a family member who's unfortunately killed by a drunk driver, you need to act fast. You need to get video. You need to find witnesses in that bar who can say, yeah, I saw that guy. He was slurring his words. He was disoriented, whatever. Um, there's a lot of cases with drunk drivers where bars overserve, but it's very hard to thread that needle. Yep, that makes because sense. Because different people have different tolerance, mm -hmm. so that's, that's exactly where the right. defense is. And even if they've served them really heavy drinks all night long, right. if they're not noticeably intoxicated, they're not they're liable. Not okay, here, yeah. here's the second okay. one up here. All right, now going back to our priest and uh, rabbi friends, they're well, intoxicated, this is. <laughs> and being wise men, they say, well, let's order an Uber. Um, and they're engaged in their discussion. They get in the Uber, and they don't put their seatbelts on. Uh, the Uber driver runs a red light, causing a crash. The priest and rabbi are severely injured. Do they have a case against, let's start with the Uber driver? I would say yes, because they did something illegal. He ran a red light. I know in California, if you don't have a seatbelt on, the guy won't even drive because he'll get a ticket. So I'd say, yeah, the Uber driver. You have a case against the Uber driver. Uh, the lack of a seatbelt will hurt you. A lot of people don't put seatbelts on when they get in taxis and Ubers and that kind of thing. And you got to do that because it can undermine your damages. The bigger question is, do you have a case against Uber itself? I, I would, if you say yes, this will be interesting. I would say no. We can't control the, what the employers are doing yeah. all the time, right. I guess. You are both right. Okay. You do not have a case against Uber. Uh, in Ohio, the drivers are independent contractors, but here's the good news. Uber, by law, is required, uh, Uber and Lyft are required to have $1 million in liability coverage for their drivers. And so you would have coverage. So you don't need to necessarily sue the, the company. Interesting. So, now let's do this last this one. Okay. This last one I love. Okay, this comes from <laughs> Jeremy Zimmer, who's one of the most creative <laughs> people in this building. <laughs> Okay, we've all seen this. You're driving on the freeway and you're behind a big truck and they have a sign, stay back 100 feet, not responsible for broken windshields. You happen to be 80 feet behind him when you notice the sign and when you notice a large rock flying at your windshield, you swerve to miss it in vain. It smashes your windshield and you hit a pole. Do you have a case against that truck driver? I think you do because I it's just say a yes. sign. It's just a sign. It's not, <laughs> you know... You, Anybody could put up any kind of sign. Right. I want to say yes. Absolutely. You guys are on this week. You absolutely <laughs> Last have a case. Last week I was so off. So. The sign is meaningless. <laughs> you know, it's like having a sign that says, I zigzag down the road for no reason. Yeah. Or I don't use my blinker. <laughs> Watch out. I like to shoot my shotgun out the back of my pickup truck. <laughs> that does nothing. You have a case. 
No, uh, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, Tell you're people. fine. So there's, if you, this is the thing. A lot of people, things happen to you. You don't know if you have a case or not. So why not speak with someone? And this is just anybody. I mean, you sit down with Tom, and you feel like you're talking with And you, you know, get a couple friends. laughs out of it, too, yes. right? There you so try to keep you it make light. people feel comfortable. So that's his email address there, Tom at MerrimanLegal.com. You can go to the website, MerrimanLegal.com as well. Um, it's, it's nice. When you're in a situation like that, yeah. it's very intimidating. So to have someone yeah. to be able to sit down like you that's... It's kind and calm, and you know, I think that's it's Boy, a you're giving time. him a lot of love. Yeah. No, <laughs> call me, we Just do say. it for free. Yeah. People, ever since we did the last case or another case, people call me with all kinds of stuff, and we talk about it. And uh, sometimes they're just curious. But and uh, if you have a case, and, and if you get a claim, and if you get it, then yep, then if you have a real case, there we'll take it and off we go. Very interesting. I enjoy this game very Thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.